I said, what if you just visualized that there's an auditor, a success auditor, put in the success tax and know you're gonna fail, know it's gonna go sideways, but it's worth it. No matter what you're doing, even if you hate it, realize it's temporary and be amazing at it. Don't think I'm just gonna schlub through this job and then my magic will come. You'll be screwed, you'll stay there because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Ooh. I think at the end of our lives, when you're on your deathbed, I think the question we're gonna ask ourselves is did we do everything we could to give our kids the, the tools to live a fulfilled life? You'll be able to go off to the next place. If you could say yes, you did your best, but what if you can't say that? Mm. The most costly advice in the world is bad advice. It's your broke friend telling you how to get make money. It's your single friend telling you how to fix your relationship. Stop listening to all the crap. Stare at your destination like an obsession. Oh my gosh. This is... <laughs> Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. I'm Ed Milet, and this gentleman to my left, I've been working on getting on my program for some time. So I know all of you certainly recognize his face, and more and more of you in the social media community are beginning to recognize his message. And so this is Dean Graziosi. Dean is a real estate guru, uh, was the king of the infomercial for a very long time, and still is, best-selling author, and I call him kind of a peak performance expert. He shows people how to live a better life, create better businesses, create more abundance. And that's why I wanted you here today. So thank you for well, being that's here, good brother. good to be here, man. I love what you're doing too, seriously. Thank you. You're making an impact. I'm trying, brother. <laughs> so he's written five books. Um, you're talking about over a million books sold total. Um, several hundred million dollars in sales through the infomercial business. He's built up a big real estate empire. And so there's so much wisdom in there that I know both you and I want to help as many yeah, people as absolutely. we can today. So I've done a lot of research on you. We have several mutual friends, and as you know, they wanted us to get together. Yep. And now after meeting you, I know why. Yeah, truth is, not, um, four or five people said, you meet Ed yet? Yeah. I'm like, okay, it's the fourth time I got to reach out to <laughs> it's Ed. It's finally time we <laughs> do this, time right? We do this. Same here. Yeah. And just rave reviews. And so, and then as the more I read your stuff, and uh, listened to your social media and went back and researched, I was just more and more impressed because frankly, I agree with so much of what you talk about. So there's so much you could teach us, but I want to go yeah. just a little um, because I want people to understand who you are because okay. um, everyone always sees the after. Yeah. There's this, you know, good looking, wealthy, successful guy, but the before is really interesting. And so you grew up in upstate New York, right? I did. Okay. Yep. Grew up in a wealthy family? Yeah, we are loaded. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, yeah. me, tell me a little bit, you know, the Reader's Digest, but a little yeah. bit about your upbringing. Yeah, so the, the one thing I want to say is you don't have to have a really horrible childhood right. to be successful. Like sometimes I share it and I'm like, wow, I don't want people to think like, yeah. oh, the, the rags to riches story. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an inspiration because if you didn't start that low, at least you're starting on second base, Yeah. right? So, so you don't have to have the tragic story to get there. But I guess the simplest way is I just knew at a young age, and and, and I want to get back to later that having this broad, uh, uh, this broad uh, audience and having the opportunity to affect 15-year-old kids all the way to 80-year-olds now yeah. with social media in a way that we never had. Because I remember, and this is a part I'll start with, I can remember being 15 years old and feeling different than everybody in my family. Mm -hmm. Like, no one made money. My dad, I, 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 at a really early age, I equated that hard work had nothing to do with success. Hmm. My dad worked his ass off and he was broker than shit. What did dad do? Uh, cars, yep. uh, collision shop. Collision. Yep. And he worked hard, got up early, paint under his nails, sick some days from painting and fumes. So I realized at a really young age that working hard had nothing to do with being successful. Hmm. And then I recognized people in my town that were wealthy. That's why I went into real estate. There was a couple guys, one's uh, uh, Joey Noto and Dominic Afuso. It was two Italian guys <laughs> in my town. I, I grew up in a town in upstate New York. Everybody was Italian. I grew up, I thought everybody was everybody Italian. Everybody in the world was, right? Yeah, so, uh, but I watched those guys and they just were a little different than everybody else. They were, seemed happier, they had more freedom, they were jovial, and I watched my dad work so hard. So I think something's triggered at a really young age, but mm. I remember feeling alone in my thoughts. You know, I had an mm. uncle that was, I had an uncle that was somewhat successful, lived in Connecticut, and he's like, if, you know, if you don't go to college, if you're not getting good grades, Dean, then I think you should start thinking that you'll probably be a mechanic like your dad, and you should wow. get good at that craft. Whoa. It's like, and I remember thinking like deflated. So I think being on social media, we're, I'm getting so many, because like you yep. said, I just started putting attention yep. on social media yep. the last eight months. I'm getting so many kids with that same feeling, but now they have an outlet. Yeah. But 
Uh, just real quick, my story. I want to tell you the feeling. So I could say I was broke. I lived in yep. a trailer park. All that stuff was yep. true. I had dyslexia. I, I didn't go past high school. I barely got out of high school, and I mm. knew I wasn't going to college. But I realized at a young age that, and, and somewhat being naive, right, before mm. the world told you no so many times, that mm. I just, I, I wanted to break out of watching my parents struggle, watching all my family struggle. Mm. Again, it doesn't matter where you are, if the, 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 your surroundings feel complacent, if they feel okay, shit, if they feel good and you want amazing, you know you gotta break through. Mm. And I was just lucky enough to just stay persistent. Mm. I wasn't afraid to fail. I, I, I didn't doubt myself, even though I didn't have the education, the money. But, but it, you started to go down the road, didn't you? You ended up in the collision shop with I did. your dad, oh, right? I did. Like it ended up I being did. you and your dad's shop. Yeah. And there was, I mean, because a lot of the young people listen to this are middle aged people. They've also, they're coming out of a setback or a letdown. And sometimes even those setbacks and letdowns are from people that love them or that they love. Absolutely. Right? So go to there if you don't yeah, mind. Just for I know, a I'd so love to. You're in the collision shop. You end up becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right? Like, let me ask you, actually, I want to go back, because I heard you say this before. You say hard work has nothing to do. Do you think that a guy like you, because I, I understand what you mean when you yeah, say yeah. it, which is that these entrepreneurs are smarter. They find ways to get ROI, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But I, I also know about your work ethic. Oh, no. So, I, I, so, yeah, yeah. I, the point I left out yeah. is hard work had nothing to do with success. Hard work combined with the right skills gotcha. gets you momentum. Okay. And like the way I think about it, and I, I didn't finish it, yeah. thank you for looping back yeah. around, is what I see most people do is when you're on, like you're on a treadmill on number five, yeah. and you're like, screw this, I want more out of life. So you just put the treadmill to eight. Mm. So you're running twice as fast, you're, you're, you're exhausted, you're sweating, but you still haven't moved an inch. Mm. And, and that's where, what I love what you do, and I love mm. being the business I am. I never knew I'd be in this business, is because we get to show capability so you can grab onto what other people have experienced and just rob their strategies so you yes. can be working smarter. So let me let me back up. So yeah. I decided not to go to college, uh, work with my dad in his collision shop. And within a couple of years, uh, not even a year, he made me a 25% partner in his collision shop because I was bringing in business and mm. I was hustling. And him and I banged heads because he was brute force. Like he could make shit happen through brute force and I saw a better way to market and create systems. And I don't know why, I'd love to say I'm brilliant, I don't have a high IQ, I just yeah. saw it wasn't working for him. So it's like you hit your hand with a hammer and it hurts, stop hitting your hand with the hammer. Like, yeah, like, right. And it'll stop hurting. Right. But so, isn't it amazing how many people don't, they just no. keep doing it. Or go faster, hit, yeah. it, quicker. hit it faster. Maybe it won't hurt as much, <laughs> Great right? Point. Great so, point, So I just saw that, so mm. then, uh, so I'll tell you the first, the first time in my life, I felt like, shit, maybe my uncle was right, yeah. maybe society is right. It was a young age, so like two years out of, out, of, uh, out of high school, I'm a partner in my daddy. He named it Paul and Dean Auto Body. So he yeah. put my name on the sign. I'm like, at least I got something. All yeah. my buddies went off to college. Yeah. At least I got this. So my dad goes through his third divorce, and it really hit him hard. He, he, my dad was the youngest at 12, was physically and emotionally abused. So mm. he, he's fought a lot of stuff. Mm. So he goes through his third divorce, and he freaks out. And, he goes so low that he checks him in, checks, checks himself in someplace to try to get his head straight, my and gosh. they wouldn't let him out. Oh my so gosh. He, I go see him, and he said, "Dean," uh, and I, I haven't shared this much, but he said, "Dean, I, go get a job someplace." There was only one factory in our in our little town. He said, "Go get a job there. You're screwed. I screwed you." He oh said, "I'm gosh. not paying my mortgage on my house. I'm not paying the collision shop. They can all go screw themselves. Screw them." Like he was in that, wow. you know, he was in a different space, a little bipolar. So he was mm. in that paranoid space. Plus, this is your father and right. your business partner. Wow. Father and business partner. So um, he says, "Go get a job. You don't have a college education. I don't have money. All I got is debt. So good luck." And he wasn't wow. trying to be mean to me. He just didn't know else how to. Fa he didn't know yeah, he was going to have the tools. He wanted to get out yeah. so he could kill himself. If you want to know the truth. Oh my God. So they wouldn't let him out. So long Dean, story really, short, really, that, that's true why he story. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, so what I did was, but that was that was my gift, and, and that's the part I want to talk about. When you're in it, I don't, listen, I love when people say, hey man, when you're going through hell, that's your gift, you're gonna learn from it. But when you're going through it, yeah, yeah. you can't, right. like, oh great, this is wonderful. I'm getting thrown <laughs> out of my house, I'm not in business anymore, my right. dad wants to kill himself, and I don't know where wow. I'm gonna sleep tomorrow night. Wow. I'm gonna be like, oh wow, this is building character. <laughs> like, right, I didn't right. want that. But yeah. when I look back, that was, that was our buddy Tony Robbins always yeah. says, life happens for us. That yeah. was life happening for us, mm -hmm. right? That was me paying success success tax at a really young age, mm. you know? So uh, I rented his house. First, I, I rented his house to someone so he didn't lose his house. And then I moved all of his, all the collision stuff yep. out of his collision shop and I put it in this little barn. Mm. And I literally, no shit, I still have a picture of the barn. I worked in that barn. I was fixing one car at a time just to pay the bills. Mm. And it taught me how to be creative. I went back to the woman. I'll make the story sh mm. short. I just want to show you how yep. 
it doesn't matter where you are, there's another level when the tenacity and you have the ability to, to you know, overcome the obstacles in front of you. I went back to the woman who my dad was renting the collision shop for. Mm. Had, she was an Italian lady. I had dinner mm. with her about three Sundays in a row. The fourth Sunday, I asked her if she'd sell me the collision shop my dad lost, and she sold it to me with no money down and a hug. I swear to God in my life. Oh like, my there's God. little angels in your life. Wow. Like I say it now, I could get emotional. Yeah. Mary Lepresti, she's not alive anymore. God bless but she her. Sold it, she sold me the building with no money down, and she didn't like my dad. She mm. didn't, they fought all the time. And she said, I've always seen something in you. And she goes, I love you. I know this is weird. And I'm like, oh my, it was like an adopted, wow. I got goosebumps. You do. And, and uh, <laughs> she gave me the building with no money down. I moved in, I started Dean Collision Shop. Oh, hey. and, uh, and within two years, we were thriving. I got Enterprise Rent-A-Car account. I bought two tow trucks. And then two years later, I asked my dad to come back and be my 25% partner. My gosh, And that man. was the start of, that was the start of that. And then I got into real estate. I mean, I was doing real estate before then, but I started really building momentum in my mid twenties. By, by 28, I was what you would consider a millionaire. Wow. Um, well, retired my parents in my twenties. You ended up retiring that, that dad of yours that was going yeah. through all that, you retire him. I still cut that. him a check every day, every week. I still cut him a check to this every day. To this day buy him a new car every Brother, two that's years. Beautiful. Cut him a check every week. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was and, and I've had multiple of those stories along the way. Like mm. I, I got into real estate and then the real estate market changed and I shifted and had to figure thing. I got in the infomercial business. I had no freaking clue what I was doing. I was, I was literally in my collision shop. I had 30 apartments. I, was, I, was, uh, I bought a big plot of land. I was, I was building homes, about 10 homes being built. This is my late 20s. 10 homes in, in development, 30 apartments, collision shop, auto sales, and I'm writing a course on how to do an infomercial because I watched Tony on camera and a freaking guy inspired me. I bought his course oh my gosh. and literally, I, this is the one thing, uh, I, I don't even know if I've shared this, but I gave Tony money, he sent me a course, I didn't know him of course, yep. and it changed my life. Yes. And I said, wow, I cut a check to go faster. I wanna be in this business. Mm -hmm. And I knew my story was good, so I started creating a course and I filmed my first infomercial in the front yard of my house when I was 29, 1998. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you I had no this? idea what I was doing. I was fucking clueless. In fact, the camera guys, like, you got a great yeah. crew here. They yeah. showed up and I, I used every dollar I had in credit cards. They came with a big, I don't know if you guys remember, yeah. they had the big uh, dollies. It used to come on tracks. Yeah. It looked like a train. It came out of a back of a truck. Yeah. It was like five guys wheeling it down. Yeah. I set up this whole thing. They turned on a camera like this. I'm like, I could talk about this. Yeah. And the camera went on, I went freaking straight cotton mouth. Like I couldn't, really? I couldn't even take the tongue, my tongue off the roof of my mouth. Right, I my couldn't gosh. talk. And I, I went in the, I went in my house. I did a shot of tequila. No I, shit. I, I went did it before a lot of shows. We didn't do that today, but I usually do. Yeah, I did yeah. a shot of tequila. Yeah. And then I did a second shot of tequila. I went out and felt buzz with cotton mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do it. But I literally couldn't get through it. So they came back the next day <laughs> and I shot my first show and, uh, I started running my infomercial business out of my collision shop. No shit. Golly, man, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. So you, so I want to, I want to pick apart yeah, a couple yeah. so things sorry, here. I, okay. yeah. No, please, yeah, yeah. this is so awesome. So, I want to go part through a couple of things. Like one yeah. thing that you, that he hasn't told you about the infomercial thing because I was reading on you, because he's a real ah shucks it dude. You can see it, like right? ah shucks. Mm -hmm. But like, this is a thoroughbred freaking freaky stud <laughs> right here, right? And that's one of the things I'm going to ask you in a minute, but. But you heard all the, the things he was doing, but like I started this podcast because somebody told me that I should. Right. I literally Googled Tim Ferriss had a kit online you could buy. <laughs> that's right? awesome. I'm like, that's how I did. And I, it's on YouTube. I buy the kit on Amazon. I got the microphones and I just talked into it for my first <laughs> podcast like about I 19 months ago, right? I but love this it. is where we're similar. And then I'm done and I go, so how do I get it out of that machine <laughs> onto the computer? <laughs> And then how does it get from the computer like into the world? world. <laughs> I had no idea. Dude, like, I, I, yeah, I get so, it. So like everyone thinks you have to have every single step figured out. Yeah, that's a great lesson. Insane. And that's you on point. your infomercial, there's kind of something similar. Like, didn't you shoot it and had no idea what to do with it okay, after you shot so it? It's so great. I'm glad yeah. you did your research because yeah, you're yeah, reminding me yeah. stuff I haven't talked about in yeah. years. Yeah. So I, I finally get through, I film this infomercial, it's done. And literally, I'm just gonna, like, yeah. everybody says you have to figure it out. I love what you just yeah. said. Yeah. I literally hired an editor that had another job that could do it at night. It's the only one I could afford. So I'm at his apartment <laughs> awesome. and we're editing this at night and I have Tony Robbins infomercial here and I'd play three minutes and go, oh, let's edit this part to look like that. <laughs> and that's how I, that's how I edited that's my first awesome. show. So now I get totally done and I'm like, so now what do I do with it? Just, I swear to God, I'm like, how do I, how do I get it out of the machine? And how do people see it? I was literally going through the yellow pages 
trying to find like calling stations and like no there's media buyers who buy on a big scale and all this I just started digging and, and I found uh, I don't know if you remember Don Laprie of course so Don Laprie little tiny ads little tiny ads Don yes. Laprie had gone out of business okay that's why I live in Phoenix he went out of business and he laid off 300 people Okay. So I just, through calling, calling, I found his media buyer. It was Sandy Daly. On, I jumped on a plane. I flew down. She just lost her job. She was working for Don. She had nothing to do. I said, hey, I got an infomercial that I think is going to convert. I have no idea what to do. And that was my gateway. She got me the God media. Me. She hooked me up with customer, Like, Because all these people, that's why I moved to Phoenix. Oh my I gosh. hired 20 ex-Don people that were in that space. You are kidding now, me. Now, you know, he handled things his way, mine, but they still knew that space. And uh, then for two years straight, I commuted in New York. I'd fix, I had my car business, collision business, flipping houses and apartments. I'd take those profits, jump on a plane every other week and fly back to Phoenix and blow all those profits trying to get my infomercial Crazy, business going. Man. There was a time where I was burning, now it doesn't seem like a lot, but I was burning 10 grand a week. It's a ton of week. Yeah, and ton. I was flipping houses like a madman wow. to cover the losses. And everybody's like, you know, this is when, you know, yep. everybody, my sister drove up from Virginia to sit me down and say, the you went too far. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. It was like, stop the crack. <laughs> yeah. It's time but to stop the drugs. Some, all you in entrepreneurs will probably have that intervention with yeah, somebody. Absolutely. Just see it coming before it gets there. Yeah. Right. And she told me, she's like, she basically told me with love yep. that you reached your plateau. It's yeah. amazing you got to make the money you made, yeah. but now you've stepped into something that's too yeah, big for you. It's way too big. Isn't it interesting that people project their own limitations onto you once they see you? And by the way, a lot of the times it comes from love. They love you. It came from love. They don't want to see she the- She wanted to the, protect the, me. They wanted to, wanted to protect you. I think everyone should take a lesson here in that, you know, one of the top podcasts in the world, arguably right now, started with a guy not that long ago, me, who did not know how to get it out of the machine onto the computer, <laughs> yeah, out of the exactly. computer into that's the world. A great, that's a and, great lesson. And then you're talking about a man who's hundreds of millions of dollars in sales through an infomercial. He had no idea how to shoot, edit, cotton mouth it, tequila it. Once he got <laughs> it, didn't know how to get it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable, right? Let me ask you a couple of things about you, though. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I have watched you. I bet you've not been asked this before. Okay. And I think this goes all the way back to the lady who sold you the collision shop with nothing down. I think people have different ways of being persuasive. Yep. And I have found myself over the years of watching you on television and then meeting you, you have what I would consider to be a high likability factor. And I find myself, even when I would watch you and I didn't know you, and I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, or if you've been told this before, or you're conscious of it because I think some great salespeople have this. I kind of root for you. I find myself like rooting for you, um, even though you're already so successful. Are you conscious like of, do you think it's just your spirit when you communicate with people or do, are, you, are you conscious of projecting a certain version of you when you talk to people? No, I don't think I'm conscious of it. Okay. I'm not. But what I have learned through the years, we all got in business for different reasons. Yeah. I, I wanted to be successful because I hated not being in control of my life as a kid. Mm -hmm. my, my parents were married nine times between the two of them. I moved 20 times. Nine times. Nine times. So never stability. You know, mm -hmm. get a new house, you got to leave. Go here, leave. Move mm -hmm. in with grandma. So I think I, I hated the insecurity of my childhood, but it was my driving force. So thank you, God, the universe, yep. whatever you believe in, thank yep. you for that. Because yep. it pushed me to go, hey, I don't want, I don't know about you. I, I, yep. You and I hit it off in the first three yeah, minutes we right. were talking, but I'm not a control freak, but I don't want anybody to ever tell me how to live, me too. how to dress, what yep. to wear. If yep. I want to wear orange sneakers today, I yep. want to wear orange sneakers. I live where I want. I raise my kids the way I want. Yep. I don't get into peer pressure. I don't hang out with the Joneses or try to impress the Joneses. Mm. I just want to live my life. Mm. But I know that happened at a really young age. Mm. So backing up with your question is that drove me. Mm. So sometimes you need pain to drive you. Yes. And then you start being successful. Then you can go to aspirational. Now I want to be a better dad, be yeah. a better man, be a better human. But if you need pain to drive you, let it drive you. Great so point. That's, so, totally that's, agree. so that's the first part. Let the pain. And, and the thing is, don't ignore the pain. Let yeah. it seep into where yeah. it really disturbs you. Action comes from being disturbed. You don't move until you're uncomfortable. You don't put the air condition on until you're hot. Yep. You don't go to the next level until you feel the pain. So feel it. So anyway, I felt that. And when I first started, all I wanted to do was get out of that. Mm. I wanted to sell a lot of cars, fix a lot of houses. And when I got in the infomercial business, I wanted to help people. But I really wanted to create a business yep. that made me money. Yes. I mean, I'd love to say I'm Mother Teresa. I'm not. Yep. 
I wanted to be wealthy so I could retire my parents and nobody tell me what the fuck to do, for lack of a better Can word. Can I stay in with you? Yeah. I think one of the things that, that uh, people have a misnomer about is they see these very successful entrepreneurs. They think we had these grand visions of changing the world in the very beginning. Hell no. Most of us wanted to move away from something move away and from we pain. wanted to make money. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And then, But then I got addicted to the business just like I know yes. you are, dude. Yes. I see it in yes. your heart. I mean, yes. I've, been, I've been obsessing on your videos lately. Thank you. I've been watching them for a while, but obsessing on them lately is. I know the difference when someone's heart driven. Not, I'm not talking about spiritual and your chakras yep. are aligned. You can, yep. I, I'm not, and I'm not making fun of that. Right. I'm just talking about I'm addicted to helping people change their lives. Me too. Yeah. And I love to get paid really well for it, but yeah. I'm addicted to it. Yeah, right? I know you are. So, and maybe that's just the goodness that I see that comes out. Yeah, so out. let me back up. Yeah. But what I do know is I'm not consciously aware of it, but what I know through the years is I've allowed myself to be more transparent and say it like it is than anyone than most people I see. Mm. And when I even go back and watch old videos, I go, wow, that to me, I'll be like, mm. that was a tiny bit pretentious, man. Just let that shit go. God, and too. then I'd find stuff that I used to be embarrassed of. Like I went through a divorce. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like embarrassing for me at one point that like I'm the success guy, mm -hmm. but it was never right in the beginning. And now we're dear friends and, mm. and we're, our kids are amazing and they're thriving. But instead of me hiding from that, man, the more I leaned into why it happened, mm. it can help other people, and the more it healed me. Mm. So I think what you're probably feeling, uh, which I appreciate you saying that, and no one's ever said that ever, mm. but is I'm trying to be the most authentic version yeah. of myself that exists. Yeah. Like I don't ever want somebody, and you know this too, mm. How many times, because you've had amazing guests, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, the lineup you've had is incredible. But every once in a while, it's not so good to meet your heroes. And I don't so mean, true. like, you I meet exactly them. And you not mean. that you're a hero and you idolize them, yeah. but you're like, man, that guy's a badass. Or that woman, yeah. she's incredible. And then you're in the kitchen with them for 10 minutes. You're like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't ever want that. I want someone to Me say, too. I saw Dean on video, and then I met him, and then I saw him in a tight situation, and I saw him with his kids, all the same guy. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's where life... Like that's, I, I just want to be the same guy in all areas. And I think even though I'm working on myself, yeah. it comes through on video and my sales go up. I think you're right. I think you're like, having met you, it's your congruency. You are who you appear to be and more. And I, I, I think that just moves people. I just think people feel energy. You can't transfer to somebody that which you aren't experiencing. Your energy level's yeah. bananas, obviously. Let me ask you a couple entrepreneur questions. Yeah, we'll ju it. jump back into the story a little bit. By the way, one of the things that I do want to have everybody know is that he's written five books, but Millionaire Success Habits is a great book. Yeah. And like it's when I was reading it, my highlighter was on fire, right? And we're <laughs> going to talk about some of those habits in the book, but I don't, I don't like just plugging things at the end. Millionaire Success Habits is a book he's written. You will get tremendous value out of it. Get it. And we'll talk about that towards the end too. But I want to make sure you all know that because we won't be able to cover 95% of what's in that book. And I want you to have it because... He wrote that to help you, based, you know, just to be consistent with what he just told you. I want to ask you an entrepreneur question. Though. Yeah. Earlier, you described collision shop, real estate, infomercial. You had these different things going on. Would you recommend that to an entrepreneur who's listening to this now, or do you believe they should be immersed in one area? Would you, or, or do you think it doesn't matter? No, I think, I think, I think we live in a shallow world. I think, I think shallow meaning, we're, especially the new generation who grew up going through a stream, right? So yeah. what used to be hours went to minutes and now it's seconds, right? If something mm. doesn't catch you in a second. And I feel like a lot of people want that next level, which is great, everybody mm. should, but we dabble in each one yes. and we don't see enough spark, excitement or light, so we back out and go to the next one. It's like, it's like they're looking for the magic money machine and they're in one car and they're like, this car might work, oh, that car looks good. And then we jump out in the next one and we jump out in the mm. next one. So I would say, even though, you know, I'm 50 this year, so I've had like different lives. I went deep on all of them. My collision mm. shop was the best in town. That's why I landed mm. uh, uh, um, uh, Enterprise and Hertz rental car. Mm. And, and so I'm going to give you, you mind if I give three lessons? Give it, please. Maybe two or three. I just said three, but it's two or three I'm thinking in my head. Yep. One is no matter what you're doing, even if you hate it, realize it's temporary and be amazing at it. Mm. I, I, I Whoa, sat down good. with um, John Paul DeGiorio, who started Tequila yeah, uh, Patron yeah. and, and uh, Sassoon, and he said he hated. Oh, his come to me a couple times this week. Go yeah, ahead, he said he hated. Uh, he hated when he had a janitorial job when he was a kid, but he said, "Man, it was my job. I cleaned every. I used to. The, the boss came to him and said, "Man, I lifted up the desk. You cleaned under the desk." He's like, "The guy thought I loved the job. I hated. It. I just did it the best." And I realized, one of my biggest, my first big real, my first real estate deal did over a million bucks. True story. I was fixing a guy's car, 
and I'm in the collision shop. I'm gonna be completely transparent. I hated the collision shop. Mm. I ended up being the only painter because I got good at it. So every night when everybody left, I'd sure. paint for three hours. The ventilation wasn't good, I'd have headaches. I hated every inch mm. of it, but you'd never know. If you came in, you'd be like, that guy loves being in the collision mm. shop. Mm. I knew it was temporary. Mm. Because don't think I'm just gonna schlub through this job and then my, my magic will come. You'll be screwed, you'll stay there because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm. So, I, so I'm literally in the collision shop. I have this guy, he comes down, he's like, my God, my car looks great, thank you so much. We get talking, come kind of friends really quick. Yeah. And he says, what are you up to? I'm like, well, I'm doing this, but I'm working on my day job. My night job is real estate. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take real estate to a whole nother level. He's like, what do you got going on? At that time, I was working on a deal for $180,000 to buy an old vineyard. Okay. And I didn't have the money. I scraped up every credit card I had. I came up with like 45 grand. The seller agreed to sell it to me for half down and half in two years. I needed 45 grand. I tell this guy the story. I said, but I'm gonna get it. He goes, yeah, you're gonna get it because I'm going home to get it for you. Oh my gosh. Now, what if I was like, oh, I hate collision. Yeah, here's your keys. Yeah. <laughs> I made a million dollars on that deal. Oh, the first one ever awesome. documented. I, I sold that property. I killed it on that property. Killed it. What all, a great all the story. neighbors, all the neighbors didn't want me to build on the property, and I was fighting them. And then I realized, wow, what if I sell it to them? So I sold them all a piece around, <laughs> and I crushed it. That's I a killed great it. Story. So that's the first thing. Yep. So no matter what you're doing, find a way to be enthusiastic, knowing that maybe the universe, God, whatever mm. you believe in, is putting you through your trial run mm. to to deserve that. And then the next thing, I love this phrase. I've been saying it for about six months. Success tax. Yeah, I heard like, you say it earlier. You know what yeah. I love about that? Somebody told to me, I didn't make it up, but I found my own version of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, we all want to make more money. We all want to feel significance, mm -hmm. abundance, freedom, but most people aren't willing to pay it. So a great analogy I've been using mm -hmm. is, if you're in a band and you play the guitar and you write songs, it would be amazing to be at Madison Square Garden, 50,000 people singing your song, you're out in the front of the stage. I mean, could anything be more euphoric, yeah, right? right? But Everybody would want that, but who's willing to play the guitar when no one's watching till your hands hurt? Who's willing to pack up an old shitty van that barely mm -hmm. runs and drive to dive bar after dive bar playing where people are booing you? Mm -hmm. Most people aren't willing to put in the success tax mm -hmm. to pay, and I said, I said, what if you just visualized, whether you believe in God, whatever you believe in, that there's an auditor, a success auditor, and I go, okay, Ed, Ed started with shit, lives in a ghetto, okay but he's still positive every day. Wow, he's still respectful. Wow, he tried that first business and his first partner screwed him over, took all the money and left. Wow, he still got up the next day, still inspiring other people, still not a jerk. Check, check. What if you gotta check off 10 boxes before you get to the other side? Because once you get to the other side, it opens up like Ed's amazing backyard. There's not many people playing at that level. Like everybody thinks it's so competitive up here. It's not, because you guys are all fighting over crumbs and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but. All I'm saying is when you said, like, put in the success tax and know you're gonna fail, know it's gonna go sideways, but it's worth it. And, and those two things combined, love what you do and put in the success tax. And then all of a sudden, because I've, I've been framing it more than ever, the success that when shit goes sideways, I'm like, man, I just checked another box. Bro, I just bro. checked another box. And all bro. of a sudden I found a way to be enthusiastic. Bro, that is a couple of my favorite things I've ever heard, honestly. That's one of my couple things that, uh, for you. me, and for me even, because I'm at that place too, you know, like. What's next? You know, and I, I'm checking some boxes right now. Yeah. I, I'm checking some boxes. Man, that's so, so good. Um, you talk a little bit about, there's this great story you have. This is so good for people, by the way, and thank you for being so oh, generous. Oh, no, my pleasure, my um, pleasure. Part of that success tax, though, is you said something earlier about playing at this high level, and I've heard you say this, and I just, I, I, I didn't learn this till too late, not too late, I learned yeah. it later in life, and that is that my max out strategy, but you might as well play big because you say something so powerful about this. Elaborate on this. The stress level is kind of the same it when is. you're playing for something <laughs> yeah. small or if you're going for something big. People are like, man, I don't want to go for the big old thing because the stress, it's actually the, the same, same stress. No, so would you elaborate it? on no, that? I love how you say No, it's like if you want more success, get bigger problems. It's like, so like, true. As simple as that sounds, you're like, oh, Dean, that was so enlightening. No, it is. Mm. Because here, here's, this is simple, the lowest form. Like, mm. I've just started realizing I want bigger problems because I remember the stress of my first real estate deal mm. where I made probably five grand, yeah. right? Worked my ass off, was stressing, worried. The, the town didn't want to give me a permit. Then the seller was falling through and I was running out of money. It was, it was so stressful. Mm. And then I remember, you know, a couple months ago, I signed a $18 million deal. And mm. 
there was the same exact amount of stress. It doesn't matter. And and again, I I, I say that I, I I said I judge myself. I don't ever want to come across pretentious or saying, oh, look uh, at me with my $18 million deal. You I don't, don't mean that. I just want you to know that the stress you feel to pay your bills or get ahead, or it's the same stress whether you're making 10, 100, 10 million, or 100 million a year. It feels the same. So if it feels the same, then why not? avoid lower end problems so you can spend time solving bigger ones. I mean, Massive. I'm in a phase of my life, I'm not shitting you. Mm. If I order medium rare steak at a restaurant and they bring me well done chicken, I just eat it. So do I. Who gives a shit? So do I, <laughs> I'm the same way. It's like, so somebody cuts yeah. me off in tra traffic yeah. and then flips me off, I'm yeah. like, wow, they need bigger problems. Yes. Uh, traffic is bugging you that yeah. much, you'll never be successful, yes. so know that. If you're annoyed because a friend doesn't ask you to go to the mall, or someone cut you off in traffic, or you think a friend offended you, or you think a coworker's being a little rude, then you're screwed because you're worrying about the wrong things. Mm. Spend that energy on solving big problems and mm. you accomplish big things. This is massively valuable for people to hear because it's like there's someone listening right now, they're running a gym. You know, the same stress level will be when you have 20 of them. If you can scale it, you should. If you're buying two unit buildings, you should be doing that. But if you can buy 20s, the stress level is going to be the same. This is, a, this is an absolute fact. I've learned it in business. <laughs> my stress level when I had 10 agents in my agency compared to having 30 or 40,000 is the same. It's just stress. It's better to be going bigger. And you have to sell a big enough dream in your business that the dreams of everybody associated with you can fit inside the one you're selling. You entrepreneurs, you fathers, you mothers, sell a big dream so that everyone's dreams associated, vendors, clients, recruits, agents, employees, Absolutely. can fit inside <clears throat> that sucker. And what you're talking about these big problems, Tell them the story. This is so profound. I want you to illustrate this point one more yeah, time. Yeah. Tell them the story about you're paying the guy to cut your grass and your dad sees you. Do oh, wow, that's funny. You okay. did do your research. Of cool course. stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, so I was, my first apartment house, it was an old rundown Massive mansion. Massive lesson here, everybody. Yeah. It, was, it was an old rundown apartment, house, uh, uh, a mansion, like, mm -hmm. I mean, beat up, old big house. And I ended up getting the house for no money down, and I converted it into 10 apartments. So what was cool is I, I fix one up, mm -hmm. I was living in it while I fixed it, and then as soon as it was done, I'd rent it and I'd move in one not done. Mm -hmm. But I got through all 10 of them. Crazy. So now I have this 10 unit apartment house, it's doing great for me, I'm, I'm 19, 20 years old, mm -hmm. you know, it's bringing me in five grand a month net net, which was a gazillion dollars, because now I'm, not, I'm living for free, yeah. and this is, and, and plus it's building value, so I got no money down, refinanced it, pulled some cash out, I, was, I used that money to go into the next one. Long story short, the, had a huge lawn, so every Saturday, because my dad was born during the Depression, my dad grew up with, if you could do it yourself, you don't pay anybody, right? So every Saturday, I'd spend five hours. I had a massive lawn. I'd mow. I have allergies, so my eyes are tearing. I'm weed whacking. You know, the sh shit hits your legs, and it's just... Yep. And then one day, I realized, wow, I'm mowing my lawn a whole day. I hire the kid down the street for 50 bucks to mow my lawn. Mm. And my, he's mowing the lawn. My dad pulls in. True story, no, zero exaggeration. I tell it to my dad all the time. He's like, sorry, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> right. uh, but my dad pulls in, he goes, and this is how my dad talks to me, whether you think it's true or not. He goes, Mr. Big Shot, you finally went too far. You're so freaking big now that you're gonna pay someone to mow your lawn when you can do it. And he got so mad that he left and he hit the gas and he, it was gravel driveway and he dented the shit out of the side of my car. It was just like, dum, 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 dum. And I'm like, ah, oh, and he left and maybe he gave me the finger when he was leaving or something like that. That's my dad, he's right. got an Italian hothead, right? <laughs> and he left and it was so profound that I knew at that moment I was onto something. You I really did. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to say it was this epiphany and the sky yeah. opened up and I was like, wow, my dad still struggles. Mm -hmm. And what I realized, and this is what I want to share with you, is I realized an ROI on my time. At that time, I had 15 apartments, I had two houses being built, I had a collision shop and a used car dealership. Mm -hmm. If I went down to the used car dealership and sold one car, I probably netted about two grand a car back then. I sold lower end cars. Mm -hmm. So in that day, without mowing the lawn, if I sold one car, it cost me 50 to mow the lawn, I made two grand. Mm -hmm. Or if I drove around that day and found my next apartment house, mm -hmm. could be tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And it just hit me, it was so profound at that moment that I'm gonna start equating things I do with an ROI. Yes. It's like if I, and, and, and the great part is if you keep noodling it, it doesn't matter if something costs you $500 an hour. If you're working in your unique ability, you can make 10 grand an hour, still pay someone to do it. And you just chip away like an onion, peeling back an onion yep. to stop doing the stuff that doesn't move the needle. And, and something I just always love saying is because it, it really affected me when I was young, stop 
trying to get good at the things you suck at too. I just I need to say that mm -hmm. because it's the biggest lie we've ever been told. It dings our confidence when I still can't read. If I if I wrote you two sentences in an email, half the words would light up misspelled, Me and some of them are so bad that I try three different times to spell it, and the computer can't even like if it could talk to me, it'd be like idiot. Like what are you trying to say? I have no freaking clue what you're saying, and then I just put like good. You know, <laughs> like yes, the. I you completely know? relate to so, that. So, but what it does is, when, let me just ask you, watching or listening right now, if you're, if you work on something you suck at, does it make you feel empowered? Does it make you feel like you want to, like me trying to do accounting? Like, mm. could never do it. It's not my personality. Mm. So, what I know about the most successful people on the planet, including mm. you, Ed, you just got really great at a few things. Correct. The things that light you up, the yes. things that inspire you, and when that fire starts, yep. you can't stop it, and eventually you'll pay someone to do the things you suck at. Maybe yep. you can't afford that now, but just don't, don't let anybody give you a bill of goods on, on working on the things. Try to get better at what you're failing. No, just go get great at a few things. And yeah, I wish I could debate you on that, but I can't because I 100% agree. I, I just know that that's true. I, I'm not great at so many things, by the way, Me one too. of them being writing. There are five or six things I've gotten really pretty good at in my life, right? And I just work those skills over and over and over again. And I collaborate or surround myself with people who are good at the stuff I'm not good at. Yeah. I can't shoot this stuff these guys are filming. Absolutely. I don't know how to edit the stuff they're doing. <laughs> these guys are brilliant, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not my area. And I, I, this is such great juice for people in every area. And also the other thing Dean recommends is make a list of the stuff you do suck at and make a list of the stuff that you are doing that you don't need to be doing. I'm yeah. so obsessed with that. There's sometimes I'm even reading emails. I'm like, I should not be the one yeah. even reading this email right now because this is stuff for my personal ROI. Okay, so a couple of the things I want to ask you about. Yeah. Because um, it's just simple what you do, but I love the way you teach it because I'm massive on it's in my book. But yours is special and unique. Everyone needs to find a routine that works for them. Yep. And I like simple things. Sometimes people give me these like 19 yeah. steps. And I'm like, you don't really do that. No, in the real they world, don't. No, they you don't. don't do these things. They sounded really good in your book or with a hell of a speech. <laughs> And everyone who knows you knows you don't do these things. You've done oh my e God. you've done each you've done, you've done I, I, each I of them once of the nineteen. It's 19th. so funny. Right. I have three of my dear friends that are massive influencers yeah. that do that, and every time I'm like, "You're so full cool. of shit." <laughs> so, no one does I, all that I, stuff. I've hung out with you. I didn't see you do any of those. That's so true, you got man. up and pounded coffee. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, so true. I just I just think it's the most hilarious thing. So uh, you're, that's awesome. You're, it's so true, by the way. Your morning routine. In terms of gratitude, I could do, and it yeah. works. Mine's about five minutes longer than so, yours, but I love what you do, and I love how you talk about reducing it. So just share with them what you do. Yeah, and what. Yeah. This is awesome. You no, guys, you're gonna love this. And, and I fail on this sometimes too. If I don't do it, I honestly screw it up. Yeah. But but it's a consistent thing because I can yeah. do it in five to seven minutes. Yeah. So the thing is, I used to, which probably a lot of people listening, and this isn't revolutionary. And the one thing I want to say, thank you for saying, I, I try to make things simple. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I'd love to say is. There's probably not much I'm sharing today you haven't heard before. You've read it in books, you've heard it someplace, you've watched a video or a podcast, but what I'm gonna ask you to do for the first time is actually listen and apply it. Mm. And that's that's been my mission lately, is like, I know there's some of the things, success principles are the same since the beginning of time. Yeah. But when is it time to stop being inspired, stop just watching Ed, and start just doing what Ed does? Mm. Like, when is that time to stop looking for the next hit of a great podcast, the next mm. hit of watching Tony or Dean or Ed or mm. Andy or somebody watching, feeling good, and then going back to the same routine? Mm. What if this was the time? What if this was the interview? What if this was the moment you said, I'm not just going to listen, I'm going to start to do? Mm. And I, I didn't mean to get sidetracked on that, no, but no. it really, it's no, no, no. really different. No, it is. And, and like, that's why I like what you do in the morning, because like when I heard it, I went, that I can do. Yeah, so I'll I can go do really that. quick. So for me, if I wake up and look at my phone, it's like Russian roulette. A deal I'm working on, if it's not going through, I'll get pissed, It'll, I'll get in my head. And for me, I just try to find ways to frame uh, things in my life. For me, I kick ass during the day if I'm playing offense. Mm -hmm. If I'm playing defense, putting out fires, I don't move forward. I just, yep. I manage stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't move the needle. So I want to play offense every day. So I framed it in my head. This is my way for offense. So when I wake up, I do not look at my phone. Yes. If I do, it's Russian roulette. It could be shitty. So first thing, I don't look at my phone. Second thing, I just find something to be grateful for. But if you've ever done a gratitude journal and you know you're three months in, you're like, I got nothing left. Right, I said right. my daughter 27 times, my, yeah, fun, yeah. my son 42, like yeah. you run out of stuff. So for me, I just want to be grateful for the little things. Like I wake up and the sheets feel good. I'm like, wow, the sheets feel good. Or mm -hmm. 150,000 people die a day. Yep. It, you didn't die. I'm grateful just sitting here with you right now. The littlest thing, only 
So it frames your mind in a gratitude space. I'm yeah. not talking about a long meditation. I don't have time for that. Maybe you do, and that would be great. Mm -hmm. But I just think of something in that moment to be grateful for. And then, in the next moment, I just think of one win from the day before. Love that. Because, listen, as entrepreneurs, if you're watching this, you want another level of life. You kick your own ass more than anybody could. Mm -hmm. You work a 16-hour day, and you come home, and you're like, I got nothing done today. Mm -hmm. You lie to yourself. You, may, you beat yourself up. So it's a moment to go, no, yesterday I closed that deal. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I got to meet Ed, and I know he'll be a friend for life. Like, just one thing. That's it. Seconds. Gratitude. One thing was a win yesterday. Then I think of one win for that day. What's yeah. one thing I want to accomplish? If I do that little tiny thing, it puts my mind in offense and I'm in a different space. Man, I, I want to second two things here because this is so real and so good. Because by the way, most of you lose control of your life in the first five minutes after you wake up. I talk yeah. about it in my book and you begin to respond all day long. The first thing is this. The hardest thing you will do and the thing that will change your life almost with the greatest impact is to not check your phone for the first 30 minutes you wake up in the morning. I'm telling you that it'll be- Might be the biggest game changer. It is the biggest game changer for me. It was so difficult, because so what I did is I, I moved it away from where I sleep, but I'm just gonna say to you all, you think that's not a big deal, I gotta check it. I'm telling you, if you could go 30 minutes, if you could start by going 10 minutes to begin your day, something where you do not check that sucker and react, and then what you say about the gratitude thing that's profound for me, and it's a breakthrough for me when you said it, I'm always kind of like, what are the big things I'm grateful for? Grateful for God, I'm grateful for my yeah. kids. You reduce it down to just something, what's the smallest thing you could be grateful for, right? Yeah. I love that because there's always a small thing you could be always. grateful for. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful my, I clipped my toenails yesterday, yeah, whatever it, it is, matter. right? There's something, so I just want to validate how powerful I think both those simple tools, the simplest things make the biggest impacts in our lives. Okay, a couple more things. Yeah. I want to ask you some personal stuff for a minute. You got it. You talk a lot about protecting your confidence. I'm a huge believer that like momentum and confidence is like this invisible force that we wish as influencers we could explain to people. Yeah. And it's just something you need to end up possessing. I think you get confidence by keeping the promises you make to yourself. That's one of my theories. Great theory. So I want That's you to I want you to describe that, but I'd also I'm willing I'm wondering if you'd be willing to share even recently. Yeah. The last 4 or 5 years was there an incident where your confidence was rocked? Yeah. And so the importance of protecting it, and if you'd share a personal example, yeah, maybe you haven't shared question. before. It's a great question, Ted. Yeah. I'm, I'm really enjoying this, man. Thank you. It's so fun I. being here. Um, and you have an amazing audience. You guys Thank rock. You. Thank you. Um, so for me, confidence is, I, I just look at things again in the simplest form. I've never done anything good in my life when my confidence was down. I never got the girl when I was young. I never closed the deal. I didn't get the money I wanted. I didn't get the partnership. And not, not like your confidence is in the toilet and you're pathetic with your shoulders mm -hmm. down. I'm talking about your confidence is 5% off. Yeah. Do you ever go into a meeting and you know yeah. you're a little off and you're like, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna grit my way through it and you come out and you're like, damn, I should've just either ignored it or took a moment to build my confidence because I didn't get what I wanted. And I've just been obsessing on knowing that my confidence needs to be high at all times. Mm -hmm. So there's a million different ways to go. I love what Ed said on how to build confidence, uh, keeping the promises you make with yourself. Mm -hmm. Incredible. What, one of the things I do is I really obsess on looking at the things that take my confidence. Mm -hmm. So for me, as simple as this sounds, is I haven't watched the news in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't watch it all. Because mm -hmm. I've never watched the news and got down and go, wow, whew, I feel amazing. <laughs> right. Like, you don't watch the news and go, Ed, hey man, I watched the news this morning, dude, you got, you should catch it at 12. <laughs> you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> you're not gonna believe it's how amazing, amazing shit is. No, you watch the news, you're like, oh my God, yeah. right? So the news, um, I know this sounds crazy and we know this is simple, but I've really eliminated the people in my life, and you've heard this a million times, that rob my confidence. Yeah. And I've either become, if they're family members, I put the Teflon up, yep. or I've slowly pushed them out of my life. Mm. And any exercise, anything that I do that robs my confidence, the people I surround myself, exercises, like I said, don't work on your weaknesses. I've obsessed on not to-do lists. Mm -hmm. So if I go, hey, when I do X, Y, Z, it robs my confidence, I don't like it, I know it's gotta go out of my life. Like my, my threshold, confidence builder, confidence detractor. If it's mm -hmm. a detractor, it goes on the thing that's gotta go away. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage you, think about the things, the people, the, the events you do, the, going to happy hour with the guys from work and all they do is complain about how shitty your job or your boss is or your company is, if that makes you feel bad about yourself, then they're, they're robbing you of your bigger future. Mm. So I would say one of the things besides what Ed said is make a list of the things that ding your confidence just a little bit and either reframe them or eliminate them. Wow, and, and I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you a thing, I, you know, 
as entrepreneurs, it's like, it's great when you see when someone does a post an entrepreneur, it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh, life sucks. I'm going to go broke. I'm losing everything. I should have never tried. Oh no, wait, I found it. Things are good. It's really good. I'm the greatest. This, I can't make a mistake. Oh my God, I screwed up again. <laughs> so right? True. That's the life of an entrepreneur, yes. but I would choose it a million times over, yeah. even with the failures. But I have to tell you, so um, real estate education. Mm -hmm. Right. So real estate was my life. That's what made me a millionaire in my 20s. I, I wrote a book, Be a Real Estate Millionaire. That book alone broke a million <laughs> copies. Um, and I wrote that book and, and launched it in 2007 when the market was crashing. Mm -hmm. Everybody was doing it the same way. I taught people on the way down, don't fix and flip. Don't buy mm -hmm. and hold. We don't know where the bottom is. Wholesale mm -hmm. on the way down. So I taught a wholesale strategy. Okay. Book went on fire. I don't know if any other real estate book has ever sold a million That's copies. But we sold a million of that one. Um, but. Uh, on that way down, we built a company. We probably went from 2007 to 2000, maybe 12. In that downturn, when all my competitors, literally, they were all gone. By the time we hit the bottom, they were gone. Mm. And we were a $100 million a year company mm. and making a massive impact. And I was working hard to get more influence and all those things, right? So the company's growing while everybody else yeah. is going down. So anyway, long story short, we became, I became the number one real estate educator on the planet. No yeah. one has ever touched as many lives as we can. And I've held that title for a long time, but about four years ago, uh, we were also in the live event space doing amazing 60, 70 live events a week. I wanted to go deeper because so many of my students, they can, you can give somebody a business on how to sell $20 bills for 10 bucks and they'll still screw it up. Mm. They'll find a way to find an <laughs> obstacle. They'll find a way to tell them that my family, my parents said this is a scam or nobody's going to want to buy a $20 bill for 10 bucks. Or, like they'll screw it up, right? So yeah. I became so obsessed with it and my deep relationship with Tony and the impact he has on people and his encouragement. I'm like, I want to go into the successful. I want to go upstream. So my, my whole philosophy was I can provide you with the way to make money. But if I don't go upstream and provide you with the right habits, yeah. you're going to think I'm a loser and my shit doesn't work. And I don't mm, like that. Yeah. I don't want you sitting in Starbucks in five years going, I bought that Dean course. You can't make money in real mm. estate. It's like, no, you can't make money at anything because <laughs> you don't have the right habits. So yeah. I got obsessed with this and I started scaling down the real estate business mm. and going into the success space, wrote millionaire success habits yep. and just got obsessed on it. And I have to tell you, from going with a, in 2013, my brands and my company, we did over $200 million in sales. Mm. To kind of wind that down mm. and start fresh, mm. I wanted to leapfrog doing 200 million a year in, in yeah. success habits. Yeah. And we took a dip. Mm -hmm. And of course, fortunately, I do well, so I didn't let anybody go. And yeah. I told the whole team, we're going to ride. I've been here. I'm purposely yeah. riding this down so we can come back out. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, I was about a year in. I wrote the book. We first launched it. And a lot of people are confused. Like, you're the real estate guy or the success mm -hmm. guy. It's like, no, you have to be the success guy to be yeah. that big in real right. estate, right? right? You know this. Yeah. And I have to tell you, about a, a year and a half in, I wasn't getting the momentum I thought I should. Mm -hmm. And I started, I was losing my confidence. Like, wow, maybe. Maybe because I'm older, maybe because I, I ignored social media. Yeah. I did because we were the number one uh, show on, infomercial wise, and that was so big. I ignored social media, and I see all these people with a million followers. I didn't even barely start an account yet. Yeah. Right? And all of a sudden, I start and I got 10,000 followers. I'm like, wow, does everybody know that? Look at the impact I made. Now I'm like the little guy in town. Yeah. And yeah. Then, honestly, it dinged my confidence. Thank you and for I, sharing that. And, and I started feeling a little insecure. What did you do about it? Um, I started getting my freaking story straight, the same thing, let's get my priority straight. I said, listen, if I wanted to stay as the number one real estate guy, is, is, it, is it my significance? And you know what it was? It was my significance. My show ran so much, no matter where I went, people were like, Dean, 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 yeah. Dean, come in here, sit in the front, yeah. go to the front row, have yeah. this, let me buy you dinner. All of a sudden, yeah. my show was off the air for two years, mm -hmm. and I'm not getting the, 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 yes. the love, and I'm like, wow. And you know what yeah. it did? It made me a better man, though. Because yeah. I realized, what the hell am I doing it for? I'm doing it because I want to make an Im at this phase of my life, yeah. I want to make an impact on the world, and I want to be a badass dad, yep. and I want to be a good man and a good relationship. Like, mm. that's what makes me successful now. Yep. Like, not, it's not the money, it's not the significance. And when I decided I didn't care anymore, yeah. oh my God, like, millionaire success habits, it was like, it was like a key turned. I mean, mm -hmm. the book, we're almost at 400,000 copies, that's and it's awesome. on fire right now. And that brand is growing. We started millionaire success habits live events. Wow. And I'm part partnering with some amazing people. I have the highest level mastermind. Where so, do you want them to get that book, by the way? Should they go to Amazon or should they go to a special site? Uh, you go site? to Dean's free book. Dean's free book. Yeah, you can get okay. it for free. If you cover the shipping and handling, we'll send you the hardcover. We'll, we'll put it right on the screen right now. That I appreciate you sharing that because my favorite people and also the most successful people I know are the most self-aware. And they're, I don't know, they're, they're confident enough to share their vulnerabilities. Yeah. And so I really appreciate you sharing that because I went through a similar thing when I went into this space too. And also we're both just competitive people, yeah. even though it's still in the back. It's like, man, why aren't I getting the traction yeah, I want? Exactly. You know, I know about that. And even though your needs have moved to contribution, 
significance is still a big need it for everybody, will be. right? It's it just will always, always we can always, say, I love to say, I've evolved. I'm not really a significance guy. I'm here to grow and contribute, which is true, but. There's an addiction to significance Hands that's healthy down. as well, right? Yeah, and, and I think but what's cool is, and I see this with you, Ed, and I'm mm. not just saying, but yeah. your significance is one thing, but that's not why you're doing like, yeah. The significance is a great byproduct. There you go. But your heart is to share Correct. and to serve. And so is yours. And that's, why, and that's why we connect in two minutes, and that's why sometimes you meet someone like, ooh. Yes. You know? By the way, the other reason I connect with you is because you're so good at it. I and mean, I just want to validate that. Everybody watch this. I mean, we're going to talk about where you'll follow him in a minute, but you sh his stuff is out freaking standing. I love people that get into this space like I feel like I did that you have, which I think is rare, like they spent a portion of their lives building their belief systems, their strategies, their their way of doing things. They've proven it with yeah. a success, then, so it's validated, then they say, here's what I do, yeah. rather than the other way around. Yeah. So the reason your stuff is so good is because it comes from a space of having done, done something. It. No, right? I get it. Talk lastly about, and we've just got so much stuff, but not the last thing, but the last part of my yeah, stuff yeah. out of your book. Uh, by the way, a lot of the things we're talking about here, that are just starting to scratch the surface of what you get in Millionaire Success Habits. But story is a word you just used. And I'm a big believer that I listen to people all the time and they're always telling me their old story. Yeah. You know, they're just, they live in they their don't old know it, story though. and they don't know they it. They don't know it. But the, just the concept of a story overall that we tell ourselves, you, you speak about that probably more eloquently than anybody that I've heard. So just touch on the whole concept of yeah. the cognizance of the story we tell ourselves. Yeah, so I think, I mean, even with me, like I said, I had to catch myself. I was telling myself a story mm -hmm. that maybe I should have stayed with the real estate brand. Mm -hmm. Maybe success, there's so many people diluting it that haven't had the success, they don't recognize the real thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I had all kinds of stories. I'd look at people like, God, God, that guy seems like a scammer. Why has he got three million followers? Like, I started telling myself shitty stuff, yeah. and I felt bad, yep. and I wasn't having the momentum that I know how to create. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I changed that story and I said, no, I know what I want to do for people. I'm the freaking best at it. There's nobody better than me. Give me a year, I'll be far surpassed. And then they'll realize they're actually learning from someone who's done it. Yeah. And nothing changed. God didn't come down, the weather didn't change, my bank account didn't change. The, so nothing changed except my story. So, so the part that I want to share is I did a uh, I did an interview with a young kid, uh, Casey Adams. I Love Casey. Yeah, I've so Casey with asked, you know, so he asked kid. me, great kid. Yeah. And he said, hey man, at the end, maybe he asked you. He said, you, were, as a young kid, there's a lot of young kids. Listen, mm -hmm. what would be the one thing you that you would tell people? And I'd never been asked that. Mm -hmm. I, and literally, what just came out is that your thoughts lie to you, mm -hmm. and to question those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because when I look back at what stalled me or almost had me fail or the people around me, it had nothing to do with who's president, whether you like the president or not, if he's crazy or not, the economy, mm. your, your family, your friends holding you down, a job that takes too much time. It's never any of that. The only thing standing between you and your next level, a better version of you, not, mm. not being me, not being Ed, not, just a better version of you, the only thing, and you might not believe me right now, but I promise you someday what you will, the only thing standing between you and your next level, a better version of you, is the story you tell yourself on why you can't get it. That's it. So good. I mean, so I think good. about it. I remember having a real estate deal when I was broke, and it's a million dollar deal, and I got four bucks in the bank. And I'm saying, I'll never get this money. I'll never, and I never could. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, no, screw that. I'm getting this money. Mm. And I would find it. It didn't mm. matter if I had to beg, borrow, steal, you know, some with the bank, some on credit cards, borrowing from this guy. Mm. I'd make the deal happen when nothing else changed. Mm. I didn't inherit money. I didn't get smarter. My IQ didn't go up. I didn't have a Harvard education. I just willed it by changing the story. So I guess an easy way for you guys to think about right now, if you talk about what you would, where you would love to be, it's a year from now, it's the greatest year of your life and you'd love to be there. I'd love to be um, you know, working on my own, on my own uh, company. I'd love to, to launch my own company. I'd like to have more time with my wife or my husband and my kids. Just say, but, and then fill in whatever that but is. That's usually your story. But my boss keeps me, my boss keeps me too busy. But my wife doesn't support me. But my family thinks I'm crazy. But I'm not that smart. But it takes money to make money. That's your shit story. That's the thing. That's your anchor you're dragging across the desert. Flip that story and immediately that becomes the wind behind your sail. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify it, but at this phase of my life, it is oversimplified. And I still run into it. I will catch myself being in a shit space, worried about something, worried about something with my kids, worried about anything and I'm like why is this bugging me why is this? oh because I'm telling myself lies I'm telling myself some shitty stuff Oof. I change it and then I change it in a second Oof, so good so good <laughs> dude like you're like you have said a couple things today that you were here to say to me oh, just so you. you know and like 
like my the camera guys are all nodding right now right <laughs> like like the person driving in the car should be pulling over right now <laughs> rewinding three minutes writing that down right there because we all do get caught up in telling ourselves these stories that don't serve us and the other thing i would just add to what dean's saying just my little part of it is that if you can begin to get two or three or four people in your life that surround you that are aware of the great story yeah. you're telling because your life ends up being a direct reflection of what your peer group expects of you so you've got to be telling yourself that story and telling it to other people too Okay, couple last things. Yeah. I've gotten to know you. One of my favorite things about you, I think early in your career, my deduction is that you were moving away from the space you grew up in. Yep. Moving away from some of the pain in your family, the divorces, the financial hardships. Dad sounds like a great guy, but yep. a tough dude, yep. kind of like mine, and had his own things he was fighting like my old man did. Our dad seemed sort of similar, <laughs> yeah, frankly. Probably. And uh, still talks to me like your dad talked to you then, <laughs> right? In a good way. Yeah. Um, and now I feel like you move towards things uh, for the most part. Yep. And I found with the people, I just want you all to know, what are some of the little secrets that successful people have that they might not even be aware of? The, the people I've really connected with when I've done the show, they have massive reasons. Their reasons are emotional to them. They're not just like big, like I want a beach house and a big ocean. Yep. Usually the biggest reasons are other people. The thing that will just never leave your spirit or your heart is who you want to be to show up in your life for other people. And for you, it's so obvious to me that it's your children. Yeah. And you talk about them 11 and nine? Yeah. Yeah. And you talk, Brody and Brianna. Yes, Okay. good memory. And I, uh, see, I love both those names, yeah. but I can tell they're your, your reasons, right? Yeah. So just speak to that a little bit and, and how other people should be viewing that in their own lives too because you get emotional right now you do. I do. Right? I, I, I could right. have tears coming out of right. my face right now. Right now. So and, they're, your, they're your inspiration, they're your reason, they're your driving force. Yeah, correct? so I just was having this girl, uh, conversation with my girlfriend Lisa with on Lisa. the way here and we were talking about uh, the things that drive you and the things mm. that, um, that want to be, uh, you know, it's funny you say like I, I have so many different emotions at once. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she comes from an amazing family just mm -hmm. like you said your wife did yeah like amazing she has yeah. there's five siblings their parents are together they, they're on a text string every day <laughs> they all talk every day like her phone's always blowing up mm -hmm. and going off and it's always inspirational and they're they all support each other one just lost their job and their whole family's like well i'll get together and we'll it's finally time you start your own business anyway and mm -hmm. i'll build the website i'll give you the money like it's unbelievable what they mm -hmm. do and i love both my parents my mom mm -hmm. and dad are amazing but i didn't have that mm -hmm. they split at three mm -hmm. uh, i was three when they split and i lived with mom and then dad and Graham, and they moved you know i moved 20 times by the time i was 19. Right, so it was all this insecurity. So, but again, that was my journey, made me the man I am. So for me, one of the things is that I don't have something to refer to, to be a good dad. Mm. My father's father was physically abused all the kids. Mm. They were, some of them were sexually abused. Mm. And his father did that, like, I look at this long lineage of screwed up grazioses, mm. and I knew it was gonna stop with me. Mm. Like, my sister did it. She's an amazing mother. Uh, actually, my nephew works for me. Incredible kids. Like, the greatest kids you ever met. She stopped mm. it. Mm. And I want to do the same thing. So I'm always in it. Like, uh, you and I, when we talk later, we'll probably just talk about being a parent. Because yeah. I love interviewing and talking to other great parents. Because mm. I want to learn. Because I don't have a blueprint. Like I said, Lisa, she's got the blueprint. She yeah, grew up she in it. From it. Right? So for me, I want to be a better man. Mm. And always want to continue to grow. So I can set an example and change mm. uh, the way my kids see life and experience mm -hmm. life. I don't want to raise entitled brats. That's the last thing this world needs. Yeah. Um, I want them to have hunger and drive and be good people. And, and one thing I'll share with you, um, a dear friend of mine, uh, he's about 15 years older than me. He said to me, um, and he's done extremely well, just mm -hmm. uh, extremely well. And he said, I think at the end of our lives, when you're on your deathbed, I don't think we'll ask any other question because you're a parent like me. He says, you're a dad like me. I could see it. Because I think the question we're going to ask ourselves is, did we do everything we could to give our kids the, the tools to live a fulfilled life? Mm -hmm. I said, I mean, because I don't think anything, you won't say, how many women did I sleep with? How much money did I make? How many buildings did I buy? It'll be like, wow, did I give the kids? Mm -hmm. And I said, he said, you'll be able to go off to the next place. If you could say yes, you did your best. He goes, but what if you can't say that? Mm -hmm. Jeez. And for me, it's like, Whew. that's all I think about. It's me like, too. that's one of the things. I, I can't be the perfect, I try, I do everything I can to be a great dad, just like you. Yeah. But fundamentally, I want to give them the tools to be thriving me adults. Too. Me too. And that's just one, I mean, yes, yeah. but that, I could talk about that. I want to go conquer something right now thinking about yeah. that. I want to be a better version. Yep. I also, you know, I love, I love success. I love 
I love accomplishing something people say you can't, so do you. Yeah. Your energy changes though. When you tell your former story about what you're moving away from, just so you know, you even lean back when you tell it. And then when you step into the story now for your children, you lean forward. It's amazing to watch. I've never said this on a show before, but a thought occurred to me when you were talking, because you remind me of other people who have said this. You deeply love your children, and I think everybody listening to this does. You know what, if you just erased everything today, you guys, every show you've listened to, the most successful people I know, and by the way, you're the first person that made me have the thought, just because I feel how much you love these two children of yours, they harness love more. They harness the emotion of love. They almost leverage love yeah. to go do something great. Because if, if love is the most powerful emotion in the world, right, if that's what it is, you have to harness that and leverage it to go do something extraordinary. Because that's the, the overriding thing in this man's mind and heart all the time, all the time. When he leaves here and he's driving to San Diego with Lisa, right? When we're in the middle of the interview for a moment, right? All your parents relate to this. When he was driving over here this morning, one of the first things he thought about this morning, before he went to bed last night, was Brody and Brianna. So, but some of you don't harness that. It's almost like you love them, and then you set them aside when it's time for business, right? Don't do that. Harness that power of that yeah. love, right? It'll give you strength and confidence. So thank you so much well, for sharing you. that, man. Yeah, thanks for I asking amazing incredible. questions. I think you're incredible, and um, I, I just want you to know something. like. I, I sense we're going to do some more things together. Yeah, so do I. You're just, uh, you're a powerful big spirit. And everything about you, you showed up fit. You know, I didn't know that necessarily. And that, now, this guy just, everything that he's preaching, he's practicing. Not every day, neither one of us yeah. every moment. But I love how you show up in the world. So I want people, by the way, to experience your world too. And I know everyone watching this like, if you didn't know Dean before, most of you did. But if you didn't, you're like, whoa, this is legit, right? This is legit. So where do they find you so that he can engage you? Because he is new to social media. Yeah. He's building a legitimate following, by the yeah. way, a, a real one that's yeah. growing and growing and growing. In fact, recently I've watched it start exploding in different social media platforms. What's the best place to Probably find Instagram, you? Probably Instagram, okay. under my name. Okay, spell it so that they know. We're gonna yeah. put it on the screen too. Yeah, Dean, D-E-A-N-G-R-A-Z-I-O-S-I, -I, Dean Graziosi. Yeah. And if you wanna grab the book, there's a special link at deansfreebook.com. Okay. So you guys that are on the YouTube, you saw the link, and those of you that are on iTunes or Spotify, you heard it on the audio. So last question for yeah. you, um, which I, I'm bummed that it's over. Yeah, I know, uh, it's a, I'm having a blast. But, but, but you know, sitting next to a man who at one point in his life lived in a bathroom with his father as he yeah. was building a business. And from that place of that journey, upstate New York, you know, the gravel hit rocks hit in the car, the different setbacks. He had another business he had to take back where he had to pay off all the debt. I mean, it's just unbelievable, your journey. And you're sitting here today, and I think they've got a great insight. I try to make the show where it's two successful people and they just got like almost listen to us talk yeah. to each other. Yeah. But what if someone that's listening to this says, listen, man, I want to turn my life around. You know, there's people listening that have it going, and I think yep. we've talked to them. But you know, I'm listening to this, I'm not where I want to be. And I, I wish I could DM you a question, Dean, but you're probably too busy to respond to all the DMs on Instagram. And they just asked you, what would just be the recipe or a formula, or your initial advice you would give me to having just a more fulfilled business, a more fulfilled life, a more fulfilled spirit and existence? What would be just your, I mean, there's a million things you yeah, could say, yeah, but if you could give them something to start with, what would it be? Um, I would say, and I might've covered some of it, is really know where you want to steer your ship. Mm -hmm. Like what happens is I think, we become somebody for our parents when we're young. And then we might become someone for a relationship we're in. And we mm. come, become someone for a boss that we have or mm. a coworker or, or a partner or our employees. And then we become someone if you go to church on Sunday and then you become somebody every once in a while you sneak out to the club and then you're someone there. And we become all these people that I think what happens is inside we knew we had this destination of what we wanted but it gets diluted by all these things, all these realities, like we should cover the mortgage, we should have the money so the kids can go to college, or I should not go, like, we have all these things and we forget who we are. What I would say is spend some time in remembering who you really are and what you really want and start saying no to all the shit that doesn't point you in that direction. The only reason you're not going where you wanna go is because you're fragmented. It's like fuzzy targets don't get hit. You need a crystal clear target. And I would say just spend time, pretend it's a year from now or five years from now and you're living the life that you wanted. Maybe the life when you were younger, the life before all the, cl the clutter 
and find what that is and find a way to obsess on it and find a way to stop doing all the other shit. I mean, I keep getting simpler and simpler. I start, I, I've been dressed, I got like 20 of these t-shirts. Yeah. I got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of watch. I stopped wearing, like, I, I'm finding myself getting mm. simpler and simpler because I know where I want to go mm. and nothing else really matters anymore. Mm. And if, if someone would have given me that clarity younger is realize that most people are wrong that are giving you advice. The, the other thing I'll say is, the most costly advice in the world is bad advice. It's your broke friend telling you how to get make money. It's your single friend telling you how to fix your relationship. Stop listening to all the crap. Listen to the good stuff like what you're hearing here and other wonderful people who have done it and get rid of the stuff you shouldn't be doing and stare at your destination like an obsession. Oh my gosh. This is <laughs> This has been a master class no, today, man. Like literally, this is a master class on success, <laughs> on personal development. And what's great is you could tell we're just scratching the surface. And yeah. so that's why I want you interacting with Dean, why you want I want you following. This like flew by for me today. Yeah. Brother, thank no, you awesome, so much. Man. You're, I'm glad you're to incredible, have you, man. man. I, you too. I'm blown away. So everybody, I want you to follow Dean. I want you to get his book and, and by the way, his other books as well. And I just want to remind you to subscribe. If you're listening to this on iTunes, subscribe. Spread the word. It's the best show in the world. It's the best program on it Earth. It is. Do and, it. And, and if you're on YouTube, do likewise. Make some comments as well. Remember, every day on social media, though, you guys, I try to engage with you on a deeper level than other people do sometimes on social. And so we run the two-minute drill every single day on Instagram, right? And what that means is when I make a post on Instagram, within the first two minutes, if you just make a comment, with the hashtag max out on there. You're in a daily drawing to get a chance to have a coaching call with me, some of my guests, gear from the max out store, autograph books, all kinds of great things happen. We pick a winner every day and if you miss the first two minutes, all you have to do is just make a comment every day. At the end of the week, we look at who's made comments on every post. And we pick a winner from there too and it helps us engage and you and I connect and with my guests as well. So please make sure you're making comments on all the social media posts. And again, I hope you're enjoying today's program. I hope you take notes, spread the word to everybody else, and max out your life. God bless you, everybody.